Hi, I'm Carl, and I'm going to take you through a non-mathematical explanation of Fourier series and Fourier transform. As astronomers, we usually see a picture of a radio telescope receiving a signal looking something like this, a nice sine wave. We measure the wavelength and can then work out what's going on at the source. The reality, however, is that the signal we receive looks more like this. Hidden in there is a whole lot of different processes, and we have to tease out the individual parts to find the gold. It's much like having a cake and unbaking it. Let's work from the other end and use some mostly healthier ingredients. If we mix this orange, strawberry, and happy juice together, we end up with a drink that will get us through the rest of this subject. Each ingredient is like a different wave. When we mix them, we create a new, more complex wave. Let's take a look at a few other examples, this time using only waves. Example 1. Let's start with a 1 Hz sine wave. We add a 3 Hz sine wave and we end up with this. You can see how that strong 1 Hz wave drags the signal up in the first half and down in the second half. So what about sine waves with different amplitudes or strengths? What happens when we add those together? Here's our 1 Hz sine wave again. Add a 3 Hz wave, which is slightly less strong. Let's now add a very strong 8 Hz wave. Mix them together and we get this. This time the stronger 8 Hz wave in blue dominates, but the 1 Hz wave still has an effect, and the 3 Hz wave less so. OK, so here's example 3. Here's a weak 1 Hz wave, a very strong 3 Hz wave, and an average 8 Hz wave. Mix them together and we get this. There's a lot going on there. Each of the different waves interact at different points and either add or take away power from the final signal. And here's one more example. A strong 1 Hz wave, a weaker 3 Hz wave, an even weaker 5 Hz wave, a 7, and mix them together and we get this. Looks a lot like a square wave. In fact, if we keep doing this into infinity, we will produce a square wave, or something very close to it. So far, we've learnt how to add sine waves together to get something more complex. This is called a Fourier series and can be used to represent any periodic signal. So how about going the other way? We are given a result and need to work out what's inside it. Let's take our happy juice, put it through the magic filtering machine, cast a voodoo spell and out come our ingredients. What we're doing here is taking our signal, which shows us the power over a period of time and transforming it into individual components, which show us the power of each wavelength or frequency. This is the magic Fourier transform machine. Let's take a look inside. It should be immediately obvious to anyone with even a basic level of math that this makes absolutely no sense at all. So I searched and found this nice explanation of it. Still not quite clear? Yeah, me too. I'm now convinced that this guy liked to wear these hats. This here is by far the clearest explanation of the Fourier transform. OK, enough funny business. Let's look at some examples of unbaking that cake. Here's our signal. It shows the strength of a wave on the y-axis over a period of time on the x-axis. We can use a Fourier transform function in our program to tell us what frequencies it's made of. Here's the transformed result, which shows us the constituent frequencies on the x-axis and how much they contribute on the y. Let's take a look at a more complex example. Here's a pretty complex looking signal as a function of time. Here's what a Fourier transform tells us is inside it. There's a strong 150 Hz wave and a weaker 50 Hz wave. There's also a lot of smaller stuff or noise around. To prove a point here, let's take our complex signal again, transform it, then rebuild it. Here's our signal and here's our transform. If we then plot a sine wave of strength 2 at 150 Hz and add it to a wave of strength 1 at 50 Hz, we get this. Let's zoom in and take a look. We can see that our synthetic wave in red matches pretty closely to our original signal in blue, proving that a Fourier series is a good way to approximate a complex or naturally occurring signal. So what have we learnt? We've learnt that if we mix various sine waves together, we get a more complex wave or a really nice drink. And using a little Fourier transform witchcraft, we can go backwards and figure out the individual ingredients of that signal.